of Liz Emptage Ceramics and today we're going to be having a look at negative space in drawing. Um, now some of you may not some of you may not know what I mean when I'm talking about negative space but basically I'm referring to the space between the objects so let me just give you an example. So here on the table I have set up a um, still life. Let's just right. Uh, so maybe hmm, looks a bit dark from that angle. So I'm going to bring it round like that, and hopefully you can see. Okay. So if I was to draw this group of three objects from the, the angle that I'm sitting here, then I and I'm looking specifically at negative space then I'm looking at drawing the lines that go around the objects and not filling in the detail of the object first. And the reason to do this as a project or just as an exercise or something fun to do is because very often when we're drawing, we're focusing on the actual objects and we forget about the space in between. We forget to measure how far this object is from that object or that object is from this object or what's the relationship of height between that object and this object. And we can get carried away with just drawing one area or another area and forget about the whole. And um, so the idea with looking at negative space as an exercise um, or even a, a starting point, if you like, is um, to, to make you think about other areas of your picture. So, as usual, we're going to talk, start with some warm ups. And I am just going to do my hand warm up. And those of you are, who are here with me now, you can do this too. Some of you may not be able to be as vigorous as I'm being, but just do what you can, just to kind of relax and loosen your fingers. And I can now see how <laughs> terribly bony my hands are. <laughs> right, that's got the energy going a bit. So... I'm going to start off with my favourite exercise, which is drawing, just looking at the uh, objects and not looking at the paper. And the reason I love this so much is because it really makes you focus on what you're looking at. Um, I'm going to angle the camera down so you can see what I'm doing as I do it. Um, unfortunately, I don't think you'll be able to see the actual objects as I'm drawing them, but hopefully you'll get an idea about the way that I'm looking at the, the objects and the way that my pencil is moving across the paper. I'm used, today I'm using a, a 6B and that's because what I that's what I feel like. But you could use a biro, you could use charcoal, whatever you've got to hand. Try not to, to worry about the details. The main thing is to have a go and get something down on, on paper and to focus on something different. Um, I've chosen three objects that I really love. So we've got a green vase, which I'm not quite sure where that's, that came from. This water bottle belonged to my granddad, who was in the army. And this uh, lovely, heavy ceramic vase was made by my husband as a child. <laughs> and I, I really like the glaze and the weight of it, although perhaps you wouldn't uh, put it in an art gallery. But it's got, it, it, I, I like it very much anyway. So I'm just going to angle the camera down so that you can see the paper. And... Um, okay, so just put these out of the way. So I'm now turning the paper round because I need to angle myself so that I'm facing 
the way that I'm drawing. And I'm hoping that you can see this. Yes, I think you can. So at the moment, I'm doing this drawing and I am not looking at the paper. And I know that I've said that already, but I'm saying that so that I remember that that's what I'm doing. And I'm starting at the bottom of the green vase. And I'm just looking at the outline of the vase. So I'm not drawing any of the detail within the vase. And I'm just doing a continuous line. I think I might be running, going to run out of paper before I get to Jeff's vase. But anyway, jug rather. So down the side of the vase. And then I hit the old bottle and that's got a lid on it and I'm going around the outside and I'm coming down the side of the lid so bottles covered in some kind of leather now I think the the bottle meets the side of the jug and I'm going to go up here up towards the spout the jug around the outside I think. Uh, oh. So I'm coming inside and I'm going to attempt to draw the inside of the handle. I don't know where that's going to join up. I'm still not looking at the paper and I'm just drawing the outside of the jug. And then it comes round and up. I dread to think what it looks like now. The bottom of the water bottle, my granddad's water bottle. Then the vase. lovely green vase and now that should join up but I know even without looking at the paper that it hasn't oh wow <laughs> okay so this is what we've got oh let's get it uh, sorry so this is what I have come up with which is quite um an abstract version of those vases, the vase and the jug and the water bottle there. Um, so with something like that, um, you could then take some colours and paint and fill out these areas here if you wanted. Or you could, uh, let's see if I can do something quickly for you now. Um, Sorry if I'm being a bit juggly with the computer, moving it around. Um, to show you, that's, I'm just getting a charcoal pencil. Is that the, that's the hard one. Sorry, I want the soft one. And it's here. And what I'm going to do is what you could do. And this would probably look nicer, actually, if you did it in colour. And you could really play around with colour combinations. Um, say, for example, colouring this all in one colour here, and then taking another colour and putting that in there. But it might be nice just to fill that out. And you could make, I'm not going to be able to do it all now, but maybe I can post something for you all later. Um, the idea is, being that you could make some interesting patterns, just blocking out these areas and then um, colouring in different, different colours at the back. Right, so I'm going to put that to one side, just as I used to do on Blue Peter when I was a child. <laughs> um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to have a go at drawing the same um, set of objects, only this time I'm going to be looking at them and I'm going to focus on the shadow. So I'm not going to be doing any line. I'm not going to be drawing. Um, I'm not going to be drawing the insides 
of the objects. I'm just going to be focusing on the shadow that is around them. And uh, let's, let's, so that's a bit darker there. Yeah, maybe I'll do some shadow on the edges of the objects, but I'm mainly going to focus on this negative space here. Okay. Right, let me just angle that down there. Okay. So again, I am starting at the bottom here. And I'm not, the paper's not quite at the right angle for me, sorry. Right, so you've got a bit of shadow here. And this is just going to be a quick sketch. So here is much darker behind there and we've got kind of goes out in angles now I've placed these items onto um, white paper and that's in order to to make them stand out but you can have them have your different objects how you like um, so where am I I've got this um, funny little paper, rolled up paper that you can use. I'm using a charcoal pencil now just for blending. It also works with a really soft pencil. Um, the last session we did shading and some of you might have seen that and uh, we were using it's a bit darker there. Okay. So I'm just doing the shadows in the paper. And once again, I'm aware of the fact that I've run out of space. <laughs> I've got this. I've got the um, paper at the wrong angle. Never mind. At this point, we'll just keep going. And now the reflections that come off um, this object here, uh, the jug, are almost like little ripples across the paper because it's glazed. You've got light that has been reflected from the glaze onto the paper. It's using this um, rolled up paper stick thing, it makes me think about using felt pens somehow. So I'm just focusing on the shadow here. And then, so that's the bottom there. And then, yeah, the edge, the bottle, it's quite dark. But the behind is white, is lighter. And of that so that vase bit there is quite dark and that bottle which is quite dark and that's where it joins it's reflections in the glass bottle is quite lots of reflections you need to spend a lot of time on that but that could be a a fun project, and that's good. Okay, no, I'm re now resisting the temptation to draw more on top of the objects and keep to the plan, which is we're just doing the negative space. So this um, got a bit of darkness. And now.
So this is the light reflecting from the window, which is behind the computer. So that's the main light source. So what I am drawing doesn't really look like anything particularly interesting, but what it does is it means that I'm spending time looking at the, the spaces between the objects, because if you look at the work of the great masters, you will see that it's not just about the objects that they're drawing, it's also about the items around them, the folded materials or the background and the angles wrong. So I've got that it goes like that. Okay. Drawing the outside, the bottom. Now up here, it starts to get darker. So it goes. Trying to resist the temptation to put in the shadow on the glass bottle. Right. Comes up here. So I have drawn this too high because actually the top of that bottle is in line with the neck. So I'm going to bring that down and I've got a rubber here. Just going to rub it out slightly. Behind there. It's a lot darker. So that can Bring that out. Okay. Right, now this is completely abstracted now. <laughs> and rather wrong, but it gives you a bit of an idea. And then, so that can all be shaded in there. Right. <laughs> so, I think the, me the most interesting part of this picture is the the bottom part the top has gone off pieced a bit but if you look at the bottom then um, I've basically um, tried to add the di the different light and dark areas and to to focus on that um, the next uh, little exercise that we're going to do is we're going to have a go at um, drawing with the left hand, which I love doing as well. And I thought I would um, pick something a bit different because um, you might not have three particular objects that you want to draw. I thought um, maybe I would have a go at drawing 
this messy bookcase or at least the top shelf area so that you can um, see what I'm talking about in terms of um, negative space where you've got lots of different objects and they're all kind of stacked upon each other. Right, so let's just get this here. Um, right, and I'm going to turn the paper around that way because the bookcase is at a slight angle. And I'm back with the pencil now. So this time, uh, I'm going to have a go with the left hand, and oh my goodness, it feels odd. Now, right, I am starting with the edge of the bookcase. And that comes down, goes across, and then as I go in, there is a toy cash till with some the edge of the note and that's the catch tail goes up here hmm. it's quite hard drawing with your left hand because you can't because I'm going from left to right across the paper and so my hands in the way of seeing what I've actually done and then I'm coming down here See the beep beep machine that beeps all the produce as it goes into the till. This is the edge of the till here. It's not quite right. right? It's okay, I'm trying to come back here. So it slightly comes off. Resisting the temptation to draw the inside, she says that she started to draw the inside. Right, that's where the actual till bit is there, the, the draw that comes out. And then over here is a box or memory game. Nope, you can't draw the outside of the edge of that box, so that comes up. Like that and then there's a book there and that comes across and there's two books together and that goes up there it goes in there and then that's inside comes down there's another little book there it's a game small box and a thing of cards and that's the bottom the back of the other box and then we're attached to the edge of the toy cash tail. And then this is the back of the shelf. She went a bit high. Just comparing it to the book. And then bring that line across there. And that actually the edge of the book comes off the the edge of the bookcase comes off the book off the page. And then I could carry on and go underneath, where I've, that's the bottom of the shelf, where I've got more books and that comes down. And the books go in like that. And then it gets very messy because you've got, it's quite dark. It's difficult to see what ends where and what what begins so I'm trying to draw the ends of the books that are inside the bookcase now just here there's a set of books that looks like they're falling off the shelf someone's pulled them and then put them back again and there's Mr Men books Taylor Floster Thomas the Tank What's that? Oh, that's Peppa Pig. And then that goes on, and then that's the back of the bookcase there. Um, and then, yeah, I'm not going to 
be able to fit anything else on the page. <laughs> so, if I show you this picture, I don't suppose you'll look at it and think, hmm, that looks like a child's bookcase with um, a toy cash register, some memory games and some books on it. Um, so uh, again, you could um, you could from that you could then add to it um, and start shading in the background. So if I was to um, shade in the background behind this, these areas here would be quite dark. I'm now I'm now picked up the charcoal pencil. I didn't mean to make that go in there. Um, and I'm going to just pick out the darkest areas. And around here. Really dark. Now the good thing about drawing with your left hand is that when you then pick the pencil up with your right hand, although what you may have drawn with your left hand looked like a load of rubbish, it then means that you feel a lot freer or maybe more confident drawing with your with your right hand and uh, it can give you a bit of a bit of a boost now behind here is really fun. And in here as well, it's very dark too. I'm doing this um, very quickly, but you can take more time and have more, have a bit more of a look than I do. But it depends. Sometimes it's really nice to do things very quickly and not to worry too much about what you're doing and be quite spontaneous and go with the flow. Um, also it can help to have some really nice music on the radio depending what you're into. So something quite some vigorous mu music might make you draw more quickly or more confidently whereas some maybe some cl calm classical piano music might help you to relax into your drawing more um, oops use that and then you can add some more shadow and so it goes on. And now the picture has changed even more and it looks even less <laughs> like what I was drawing. Um, but I like a bit of the abstract. So, right, now we're gonna have a go at doing, uh, okay, we're running out of time. We're gonna have a quick go at doing continuous line um, which is basically where you draw um, your item or whatever it is that you're drawing. Um, we're still looking at the negative space, but we're just we're gonna we're gonna keep the pencil on the paper. We're not gonna pick the pencil up. So I'm gonna go back to my original subjects over here, and um, I'm gonna angle this down um, and I'm, sure I'm going to put it like this. So I'm starting, I don't know if you can see that, but I am starting at the join between um, the bars and the water bottle. Okay, and I am not allowed to pick my pencil up whilst drawing. Already I've realised I've started too far up on the paper, so I'm not going to get it going on. 
So I'm just turning that over. And let's go back down here. And actually, that's okay. And now starting here. Okay. Needs to come out here. Otherwise, the bottle is going to crash. Wobble on that lovely hefty jug. Oops, it's a bit wobbling. I've got a page here. And I just realised I picked up my pencil, which is not what you're supposed to do. Um, and then we join back up. The bottom, water bottom. Standing straight and then sides. And then we're back. To the lovely green vase around the edges. So I left the pencil and then back down here. It's joined up. Right, now I'm going to go back and put in the handle. Mm -hmm. I quite um, like this picture because looking at it now, it looks like um, two stately old people, three rather, stately old people. There we go. Um, so what I would do now um, is um, just... I am going to just have a go putting in some of the shadow behind quickly. Um, so it's lighter there. This is darker. And I'm normally, if I was doing a group of objects, I'd probably start by putting the shadow straight onto the items because we're focusing on the negative space it's quite nice to work on in a different way So then on the actual objects, now I'm going to add some shadow to the objects without doing any line, such as a little bit darker. This Shadow here, a bit side. Okay. 
is over there. And it's a darker area. Yeah. Now if you're finding it difficult to see what's darker and what's lighter, sometimes you can just close one eye. Like you do when you're looking at perspective. Um, and then you can see, actually that background there is a lot darker than what's going on. Yeah. Right. Now I okay. Another thing about the um, looking at the negative space is that it helps to abstract the object and makes you look at it in more detail and not just think about what you think you see, but actually look at what you really see. I'm going to leave it at that for today, as we're, we're, we've run out of time. I'll just show you what I've come up with. There we go. So it's uh, three wob rather wobbly, funny looking pots that I've done quite quickly. But um, it's been very enjoyable. Thank you for joining me. Um, I hope that you will have the chance to have a go at drawing and um, do post what you draw onto the um, Facebook page here because I'd love to see it and uh, um, see you again soon. Okay, bye-bye.